Hi friends, this is Daniel from Morales. Today we're going to talk about a recently fixed exploit that happened in OpenSea. I would like to clarify that this is an exploit that was not actually a hack. This exploit was more related with the way that OpenSea used to manage listings. If you were not aware of certain details regarding listing management in this platform, you could have been affected by this exploit. This is going to be more a case study than a tutorial, so we're not going to be writing a lot of code. We are going to start with this board Ape Yacht Club NFT with the ID number 9991. If we check the history of this specific NFT, we can see that on January 24th, it was sold to this user for 0.77 Ether. 25 minutes later, the same user sold this same NFT for 84.2 Ether. This is a profit of roughly 83 Ether, which at the exchange rate of that specific date, which was around $2,500 per ETH, was equivalent to more than $200,000. Nice profit for a day of work. This type of transaction pattern was not unique to this NFT. It also happened with relation to other NFTs in the same collection. This user, for example, was complaining about this exploit in early January. In this video, we are going to review how this exploit was possible so we're going to talk about the protocol that powers OpenSea and what actions were taken by OpenSea to avoid its users being affected by this exploit in the future. Follow me to it. Talking about OpenSea is talking about the Wyvern protocol. Wyvern is a protocol that abstracts the exchange of digital assets in EVM compatible networks to allow the exchange of many different types of assets. Wyvern works by implementing the concept of orders. Orders can be either selling orders or asks or buying orders or bids. The concept is that the parameter of the order to be fulfilled and the desired state its execution will cause in the EVM compatible blockchain are stored off chain. Then, when a couple of orders are matched, all the logic on chain that is needed to attain the desired state, in this case, that state will be the NFTs being transferred and the funds being paid, is executed. I have this example here. This is an NFT that I own is of course in a testing environment. I will list this NFT for sale for one wrapped ether. And I will keep it active for the default amount of days, which in OpenSea is seven. As you can see, the only action OpenSea is asking me to take is to sign a message. If this was the first time I was dealing with this specific NFT, other prompts will appear to give the protocol some allowances in order to manage this specific asset. Those uh, actions are required only the first time, so are not appearing here. Let's sign this message. That was pretty easy and fast. You can see that the listing was created. If I go to my wallet right now, you can see that no on-chain action was triggered through my wallet and no gas was paid. That is the entire purpose of the Wyvern protocol. Only when the orders are matched, the on-chain logic will kick in and perform the actions in the blockchain. However, you have to be careful on how you manage these listings. A little aspect that is overlooked could allow for an exploit to happen, which is actually what this video is all about. There was an exploit that happened. And uh, we can see here in our previous example what that exploit was about. The original owner most likely created a listing to sell this NFT for 0.77 ETH months ago. 
he didn't cancel the listing and just created other listings at a higher price later on. His thought might have been that the previous listings could have been overwritten and the reason he didn't cancel the original at a lower price most likely was because at that point and according to the standard implementation of the Wyvern protocol, cancellations do incur on-chain actions and thus incur gas costs. The exploiter was able to find the previous listing and execute it. Most likely, this was done programmatically through the OpenSea API. The sale was all valid and legal, because if the listings were not cancelled, OpenSea could not be blamed for matching them. Also, the original owner would have very little recourse against a third good faith buyer. This is actually something that OpenSea tackled later on. Among the measures taken by OpenSea was to make it impossible to create new listings without canceling previous listings on the same asset. Also, OpenSea figured out a way to execute gasless cancellations. As we can see here, I can cancel my listing by signing this message, which, just as in the case of the listing creation, didn't trigger any on-chain action. OpenSea has a closed platform in which they can implement this type of cancellations, which is not standard in the Wyvern protocol. In summary, this exploit was possible because users of OpenSea were not deleting their old listings before creating new ones. The old listings were still valid and it was possible to retrieve them. Exploiters then were able to buy NFTs through old listings that did not reflect the current market value of the NFTs. OpenSea introduced measures to eliminate the exploit by enforcing that new listings could be only created after previous listings on the same asset were cancelled and allowing gasless cancellations of listings. This is something that is not supported by default by the Wyvern platform. I would like to remind you guys that Morales has the most complete NFT API in the industry. We have already some tutorials for building NFT marketplaces. But if you have interest in how to build a marketplace similar to OpenSea that is implementing the Wyvern protocol, let us know. I can make that happen. This is Daniel. See you in our next video.